Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, Duality 9Xs around the world. I got a fantastic video I can't wait to share with you guys. If you guys are intrigued, if, hey, if you guys are into wartime stories and about things that happen behind the scenes, things that, um, like stories that, that we tend to hear about sometimes, you know, much, much later than when they actually occurred, uh, you're definitely at the right place because th these kind of stories uh, are filled with a little bit of horror and intrigue. And so you, you want to you want to stay till till the end to watch this one because it's going to definitely keep you at the edge of your seat. So I hope you guys have some beverages, some snacks because uh, it's about to get doozy. Now, um, the video is brought to you by Wartime Stories. It's soldiers in Vietnam reported seeing lizards. Yes, I said the word lizards that walked like men. It just just think about this for a second lizards that walk like men yeah it's it's a captivating story um again i'm sometimes i wonder why does it take so many years for these stories to actually come out right it, it would be good if people start to release the stuff but who knows i mean maybe due to some kind of contracts that they had within their uh within their units or regiments you know with the military with the government they didn't want a lot of this information to be released earlier but anyhow, it's it's a story that is definitely going to keep you intrigued from beginning to end. So if you guys are ready, I'm ready. I have my coffee. Um, I'm about to get uh, right into it. So listen, guys, if you guys are here for the first time, please smash the like and subscribe. Help us out. And, and I apologize for being away for, for some time. Uh, I had to deal with a few things, uh, but we're back. We're back in action. We're ready to go. So without further ado... Let's get it. For the American men and their allies fighting in the jungles of Southeast Asia, Encounters with tigers, poisonous reptiles, and massive insects, not to mention enemy soldiers and booby traps, these would certainly have been enough to deal with. But alongside these more conventional threats, soldiers returning from the jungles of Vietnam appear to have encountered something else. Strange creatures which defy rational explanation. The Devil Creatures of Quang Binh. The mist which hangs before you offers you a choice to pass through or to escape. Beyond it are stories which defy explanation and fly in the face of what we know to be real. It is a void of both reality and impossibility, of both fact and superstition. You alone are left to discern what to believe as you pass through what we call the fog. The Devil Beach Creatures of Quang Bin. What are you screaming about now? It was some time in the evening. A platoon-sized element of American soldiers had been inserted by helicopter into enemy territory, north of the DMZ, to conduct several days of search and destroy operations against the North Vietnamese Army. As their column formation slowly wound its way through the dark jungle, the point man at the front of the patrol suddenly stopped, throwing up his fist and quickly signaling to the men behind him to take a knee. He then ran his hand repeatedly across his throat possible enemy soldiers ahead, he was saying. Looking back towards the movement he had spotted, the men tried to make out anything that would identify the unknown threat, what appeared to be a group of four men walking in single file through the jungle. It was difficult to see them clearly, as the thick jungle was hiding both groups from each other, 
but the soft moonlight coming through the canopy above is what gave these four men away, as they otherwise appeared to be moving soundlessly. These men were clearly experts at moving quietly through dense jungle, possibly a team of NBA sappers. After a moment, the American soldiers close enough to see them realized they couldn't make out any weapons or anything that looked like a military uniform. What they had thought might be helmets were in fact the tops of these men's heads, as if they were all bald, with the moonlight through the canopy reflecting the hairless outlines of their skulls. But was that moonlight? Squinting through the trees, the soldiers could swear that these men were glowing, as if they themselves were emitting a soft aura of light. And whatever they were wearing was smooth and highly reflective and dazzling, as if they were wearing tight clothing made from snakeskin. But no. On second glance, the soldiers were shocked to realize it was their skin. Scaly, reptilian skin. And far from being North Vietnamese soldiers whose average height was somewhere around five and a half feet tall, these men, these things, all four of them appeared to stand at least seven feet tall. Entirely uncertain of what they were even looking at, the men at the head of their formation said nothing, holding their breath, waiting for something to happen. Either unaware of the American platoon's presence or choosing to ignore them entirely, these four beings kept silently walking by them until they eventually just disappeared into the jungle. With no reason to pursue them, the soldiers waited for the all clear before standing up. The point man checked his compass and they continued their own patrol, never catching sight of the strange creatures again. But another patrol evidently did. Seven feet tall, glowing men that. Hey, Mac, go ahead look and shut like her off. like snakes or maybe dressed like snakes? Williams. Yes, sir. Sun will be up soon. Go ahead and cut the engines. We'll uh, drift with the current for a while. You got it. Throughout the war, American teams were deployed deep behind enemy lines in the conduct of guerrilla warfare hoping to cut off the enemy supply lines to stop the harassment of locals and to destroy any hidden bases and weapon depots they might find. A two-boat team of eight soldiers has likewise been inserted on a search and destroy mission, cruising in their patrol boats along a river just north of the DMZ, their mission lasting throughout the night and into the early morning hours. At the onset of these night missions, a curfew had been implemented. Locals had been warned to remain at home since the men had trouble seeing in the dark, and the standard procedure for these missions was to fire on anything that moved, with the presumption being that anyone caught out at night, whether on the river or in the jungle, would be an enemy soldier. Enemy fire could break out from the shoreline at any time without warning, so the men were on constant guard, their eyes warily scanning the riverbank for any sign of movement or other indication of enemy presence. But now that the sun was coming up and visibility was improving, these men would have to begin operating under more restrictive guidelines for firing on unknown targets. This might explain why, for some unknown reason, the patrol officer ordered the boats to the shoreline to conduct a short reconnaissance patrol away from the river. After leaving the boats and passing through a section of trees, the men reached the edge of a large jungle clearing. Perhaps they wanted to mark the location as a possible drop zone for future patrol inserts or extractions by helicopter. Whatever their reasons, these men couldn't help but notice that this section of jungle was eerily quiet. They had long become accustomed to hearing the constant droning sounds of insects, monkeys, and birds. But now, this notable silence could mean the presence of human activity, possibly that of enemy soldiers. Perhaps that is what prompted their commander to conduct this investigation. Moving into the clearing in the dim light, at some point, the team began noticing a number of piles of what appeared to be animal dung scattered around the area. As they momentarily paused to examine these unusual piles, they suddenly heard crashing sounds coming from the nearby tree line. They were shocked to see what appeared to be several large humanoid creatures lumbering out of the dense brush, heading straight for them. These things were unlike anything they'd ever seen 
tall, at least seven or eight feet in height, with bright yellow skin and three-digit hands and feet, with fingers and toes that ended in sharp claws. The faces of these strange creatures were flat and sported large, snake-like eyes, with only a couple of slits for a nose. The creatures were on top of them before they even had a chance to react. But surprisingly, these giant, yellow-skinned beings were said to have passed right by these men, seemingly not even paying attention to them at all, disappearing once again into the opposite tree line. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but, uh, you know, these military soldiers were obviously quite disciplined for them to not to react. I mean, you're, you're talking about, like, they're looking for people that look like humans, right? Dressed in a different military garb and gear, of course, but people that resemble what they look like. Five, between five and six feet tall on average. I mean, it seems like these, the, the enemy soldiers were around five, five and a half feet tall. These beings were between seven and eight feet tall. They had a glowing yellow skin-like presence to them. And, and what's really uncanny about all this is how these weird humanoid creatures would just walk right past them almost as if they were just completely ignoring the U.S. military's presence. So did they know that they were there? And apparently they had like flat-like heads with like snake-like features, like like eyes like a snake. And I mean, I'm sure they, they would have known that they were there because I mean, if they were out of or extraterrestrial beings uh, unlike any kind of humans I'm sure that their senses were more advanced their eyesights their sense of smell everything was probably uh, already at a heightened level I'm pretty sure they that they knew that these military service personnel were there but it almost seemed like they just didn't care they just walked on by because they're probably focused on the things that they had to do what that is I don't know Let's see if you can find out. Spooked by the encounter, the frightened soldiers decided to immediately return to their boats. But as they moved through the section of jungle between the clearing and the river, they once again heard the loud sounds of jungle brush being trampled behind them. Whatever the creatures were, they were now following them. The men broke into a run themselves, their own loud movements now adding to the noise of the crashing sounds behind them, which indicated the creatures were drawing closer and closer. Some of the men aimed their rifles behind them, firing blindly, but it seemed to have no effect on slowing down their pursuers. Terrified, bursting through the tree line and clambering into their boats on the riverbank, the men apparently continued to fire on these creatures, watching them twitch as the bullets seemed to bounce off of their hard, scaly skin. Confused and likely terrified themselves at the sight of these monsters, the coxswains quickly pulled their crafts away from the riverbank and throttled them away. As they left, the men purportedly saw the haunting sight of dozens of these massive humanoids now gathered along the riverbank, watching them leave. The shoreline seemed to be illuminated by a powerful glow emanating from the creatures' bodies. So it seems like these creatures, um, they're, they're, the scaliness of their skin is super hard, right? To the fact where it seems like the bullets that are coming towards them are just bouncing right off of their bodies. So I, I, I don't know. I mean, it, it's it's hard to really perceive this. It's hard to even imagine. I mean, you get shot by sniper fire, by bullets, you're you're going down. Okay? And unless, and of course, you're wearing like some kind of special body armor, even with body armor, you're going to go down. So the fact that they're just standing there and these bullets are just kind of bouncing off of them, that's pretty scary. This next encounter is told from the perspective of the soldier who shared the story. In 1970, I was serving as a corporal in the US Army, deployed to South Vietnam in a region about 30 miles south of the DMZ. At the time, I was second in command of a squad of soldiers. We had set up a bivouac in a jungle area that had a few steep hills. That evening, my section was ordered to patrol one of the small valleys west of the encampment. We moved out, led by our sergeant. Not long after entering one of the small valleys, we detected movement ahead of us. It seemed to be scattered activity, so we doubted it was Viet Cong, but we weren't positive. We hunkered down for about 15 minutes, getting occasional glimpses of something moving within the trees and brush. 
There wasn't enough light to detect what we were observing, even though the moonlight was bright that night. After a while, the activity halted, so we continued to slowly move through the valley. About this time, things got very strange. As we approached a sheer rock wall on the side of a hill, it looked like someone, or something, had stacked large stones and boulders in the pass in front of us. There was also an opening in the hillside that looked like a cave entrance, approximately five foot high and three foot wide, narrowing at the top. While observing the passageway, it appeared to have been cut away by machinery. The edges were smooth, with small, even spaced grooves. We were puzzled by this because we had never seen enemy caves like this, just underground tunnels. Our sergeant suggested that it might be a BC supply depot, so we started to assess how we were going to investigate the cave. We noticed a putrid odor emanating from the entrance. The only thing I can compare it to was rotting eggs and human decay. It was so revolting that a few of the soldiers were becoming ill and started to back away into the jungle, including our sergeant. I was directing a light into the entrance in order to observe anything, but there was a haze that was impossible to see through. We had no idea what this thing was. So the entire squad took a position in the heavy brush approximately 150 feet from the entrance, far enough not to be detected, but close enough to observe the cave entrance. We quietly remained there for what seemed like forever. The jungle was strangely calm, though we heard rumbling sounds coming from the distance. It was really eerie. Our sergeant was sitting near me, talking to himself. It was obvious that he was frightened. I was looking at the rest of the squad. Each had wide eyes and was scanning the area. Tired as we were, it was clear that no one was going to doze off during this patrol. After several hours, dawn was approaching and it started to lighten up. I checked my watch. It was just before 0500 hours. Just then, we noticed movement in front of the cave. A being, I first thought it was a man, moved through the entrance into the clearing in front of the cave. As it stood up from a crouch, it stood at least seven feet high and started to look in our direction. At that time, another similar looking creature was moving out of the cave. Wow. The only way I can describe these beings is that they looked like upright lizards. The scaly, shiny skin was very dark, almost black. Snake-like faces with forward set eyes that were very large. They had, they had arms and legs like a human, but with scaly skin. I didn't notice a tail, though they wore long, one-piece, dark green robes, along well, with a dark cap-like covering on their heads. I never <clears> noticed <throat> if they had anything on their feet. They were making these hellish, hissing sounds and looking directly at us. No one gave the order. It seemed like the entire squad opened fire at once. Every piece of vegetation between us and them was quickly sheared away. I yelled out a ceasefire order. At the same time, I was looking in the direction of the cave. There was nothing there. We immediately checked our flank in case these things circled around us, but there was nothing. As we approached the cave, ready to resume action if needed, it became apparent that the beings had escaped, most likely back into the cave. It was soon decided to set charges and close the cave entrance. When we returned to camp, we all seemed to be in a daze. There was little discussion of the incident, and we were never debriefed. So I know the sergeant never filed a report. Then again, if he did, it was kept quiet by the brass. Yeah, that that's that's pretty interesting, right? So these, so again, they were in the demilitarized zone, the DMZ. And this was back, I think, in 1970 or something along those lines. And um, so there they happened to see these same creatures, they as in the military, right? The, the U.S. military that was there. And they see these creatures, but they were in kind of like a crouch-like position. But then as soon as they stood up, they were, from the accounts of it, appeared to be as tall as seven to eight feet in length, right? Top, bottom, top to bottom. That's pretty tall, seven to eight feet. Now, unlike the other video that they were talking about, these glowing yellow-like skin 
um, you know, on these like walking giants. Uh, and then they also, I mean, they, they, there was some similarities. Like, I mean, I think these creatures, they didn't have that glowing yellow skin like like the, the original battalion came across in, in the first video. But they did have some features that were, you know, um, comparable, right? Such as the flat faces with the snake-like features. Uh, their skin on, on uh, in this video happened to be black, very snake-like. So it still had that kind of reptilian, kind of snake-like kind of look and feel of the skin. Um, the only difference is the, the stark contrast in colors. You had yellow glowing compared to black. And then these, these particular creatures also had a, a robe on or had robes on as well. So, and I think hat-like, you know, some, some kind of like a hat-like thing, um, uh, you know, on, that they adjourned on their head. So... A little different and it made like these very hissing like you know kind of like sounds and so they appear to be a little bit more when researching these stories it is uncommon to find all three of them told in conjunction with one another so saying with the assertion being that these stories originated from three separate men who served in Vietnam the similarities between their stories are seemingly remarkable. But these American servicemen are purportedly not alone in their experiences. Ho Khan is a Vietnamese logger born in the rural hills of Phong Nha. He lost his father during the war. To provide for his family, Ho then spent much of his life foraging for valuable wood in the surrounding jungles, wood that is used for incense, herbal remedies, and other medicines. In December of 1990, while out foraging for agarwood in the jungle, a sudden cloudburst forced him to seek shelter. He then stumbled upon an opening in a limestone cliff wall. It was a cave, a massive cave. He could hear the sounds of a river raging somewhere inside the cave, and even saw clouds billowing out of the entrance. When he later showed his discovery to British cave explorers, this cave would come to be known as Hang Son Dung, or the Mountain River Cave. In 2009, it was declared to be the world's largest cave, extending deep into the mountains, a length of more than nine kilometers, or more than five and a half miles. The average height of the cave is 200 meters, 660 feet. Its average width, wow. about 75% of that. It's so outrageously massive, it's been found to have its own ecosystem, with breakages in parts of the cave ceiling, allowing for sunlight to shine through, leading to the growth of entire jungles inside the cave. Within these hard-to-reach jungles have been found species of endangered tigers, flying foxes, and rare primates. It's practically a lost world, thriving just beneath the surface of the earth. The cave was open for tourism in 2013. In 2015, a video was posted online that asserted that, presumably while exploring the cave after his early discovery, Ho Khan had encountered what he described as a devil creature. This creature, this video stated, had a human body, but with the skin and facial structure closer to that of a dragon or lizard. In addition to this description, Ho is claimed to have inadvertently taken a Polaroid photo of the creature while attempting to photograph one of the dark cave tunnels. In this photo, something like a humanoid creature does appear to be watching him curiously around the far bend in the passage, its body largely concealed in the dark. It's hard to make heads or tails of it, but what is seen is suggested to be distinctive facial features, the eyes and mouth of the creature being the only things captured by the camera's flash. However, this video was the first uploaded by the creator when he started his channel, and it does seem to be the original and only online source of this photo and its connection to Ho Khan and the Sondong Cave. As far as credibility, unfortunately it does not seem that the video's creator offered any indication of where he found the photo or any evidence that Ho Khan took the photo himself or that he ever claimed to have encountered reptilian humanoids. There are also claims circulating online forums that tourists to the cave have reported strange sightings of these creatures, with one tourist said to have gone missing, presumed to have been abducted by them. But again, these claims can only be traced back to the same video where the photo originated from. The creator posted two more paranormal videos following this one, 
and his account has since remained inactive for the last seven years. So, as far as proving the validity of this photo being taken by Ho Khan in a cave in Vietnam, or even being an original unaltered photo, we are left empty-handed. As of 2022, even ancient aliens picked up on the strange similarities between all of these encounters and did an episode on the Sundong Cave and the humanoid creatures. In their coverage of the events, they are also unfortunately somewhat vague in their claims that local residents describe seeing reptilian-type humanoid beings emerging from the cave. One can only assume they are likewise parroting the same information offered by this single YouTube video from 2015. Considering how difficult it was for Ho to find the cave, it begs the question at what point in time and how many locals took the time to visit the cave and happened upon these strange creatures before the chartered tourist groups began arriving in 2013. And without any indication that anyone from the Ancient Aliens team has actually interviewed the Vietnamese locals or even Ho Khan himself about his supposed encounter with these creatures, any reports about these creatures in relation to the Sondong Cave and Ho Khan remain questionable. They're going to say that, right? They're not going to want to bring these kind of stories out in the public um, and expose them uh, to the entire world, right? Because they, they don't, they clearly, A, they don't want to frighten people. They don't want to say something where it's going to create some sort of panic, some kind of pandemonium. Like people people react in, in a lot of different ways. And and remember, it, like the general psychology of humans are people fear what they don't know, right? So if they don't know what they know, that becomes strange to them. And that's where paranoia can, can sink in. And people tend to react in a lot of different ways. Uh, the government is, and I'm, I'm saying the government, the military in this sense, I'm sure are working hand in hand to prevent from any kind of uprising, any kind of chaos that could potentially ensue with the release of these kind of stories. Now, you're talking about these creatures that are like lizard-like, okay? First of all, that in itself is is very... Um, it's, it's scary, guys. It's scary. I mean, it, it's like, I mean, it's not like you and I get up and, and walk down the street and happen to encounter seven, eight-foot-tall walking upright walking lizard looking people we don't that's not normal so is is there some kind of a cover-up here is there some kind of a potential story that was leaked and then they retracted it like i mean i, I don't know i mean there, there's so many theories and possibilities what i can tell you in that part of the region and that part of the world there are so many hidden jungles and caves um, with their own ecosystems and you know I mean it wasn't it wasn't too long ago and when I say too long ago I think within the last like 15 years 20 years I think some scientists um, made an expedition out to like some place in like Indonesia or in the jungles or um, some, somewhere in that in that region right that part of Asia and they they stumbled upon a piece of land that's been untouched undisturbed by any humans for like 800 years or longer and what they found was absolutely mind-blowing it was incredible they found species upon species um, of animals and a lot of which creatures a lot of which that were undocumented they they took photos they took you know, video evidence. Um, they were writing things down. They they took measurements. Um, it was absolutely incredible. And because of that expedition, they were able to in, uh, encounter brand new species that that they were able to uh, to talk about. And um, absolutely crazy, absolutely crazy. So so these kind of stories they they totally intrigue me, and it just kind of makes you wonder what else is out there. But I don't think we're done. So let's let's continue. As for the soldiers' stories, only two of them appear to have known sources. Paranormal show host Art Bell covered the Riverside encounter during a live broadcast of his Coast to Coast radio program sometime in either the early 90s or early 2000s. 
The third encounter, involving the creatures emerging from a cave, was submitted to paranormal researcher Lon Strickler in 2015, which he then published to his online blog. The story was provided to him by a U.S. soldier who served in Vietnam and continued his military service after the war. Lon assured his readers that the man had provided references for his identification, which both checked out. Lon confirmed that not only had this man served in the army, but that he had led a distinguished and admirable career before retiring. At minimum, wherever they are presented, all three of these stories are given the authority of at least having originated from an actual service member who fought in Vietnam, as opposed to the stories being works of pure fiction. As to their reasons for remaining anonymous, it goes without saying. Even a small amount of military experience and the understandable expectation they would have had of being labeled as unhinged would offer us plenty of insight into their motivations. It should also be said that many of these men returned home from a war, physically and psychologically injured, only to find themselves the target of political animus. Instead of a welcome home, they found themselves hated and despised by many of their own countrymen. Serving a prison sentence for dodging the draft, or being called a baby killer for choosing to serve their country with honor. Those were the choices our society offered them. Not exactly a warm environment which would have encouraged our boys to tell these more bizarre stories with any confidence. What can be said of the reported military encounters with these creatures in the 1970s is that the location and timing of each encounter is somewhat consistent. All three of the encounters are presented as occurring in close proximity to the dividing border between North and South Vietnam in the province of Quang Binh. Even the Sondong Cave is located in the same province, 70 kilometers or 43 miles north of the DMZ. So that entire mountainous area could be hiding any number of undiscovered cave systems. All of the encounters were reported as taking place at night, possibly in the early morning before sunrise, or otherwise near caves, indicating that these creatures would likely be nocturnal and that their eyesight is well adapted to darkness, an ideal adaptation for cave dwelling. With the exception of skin color, bioluminescence, and the wearing of clothing, the physical descriptions given for these strange creatures and their behavior likewise appear similar across all three accounts. But if they exist, where might they be hiding now? Like the deepest parts of our oceans, the sprawling, massive jungles of Southeast Asia where these events are said to have happened, these jungles remain largely unexplored. And it's no wonder why. The soldiers who fought there will tell you themselves. The terrain is difficult to traverse. Steep, cragged mountains with sheer drops leading down to muddy jungle basins. Not to mention dealing with the biting insects, poisonous snakes, and other unpleasant animals. In any case, it would hardly be feasible to explore these regions by any means other than on foot or by aircraft, and the U.S. military's prolific use of toxic herbicides during the war points to the obvious problem with aircraft. The thick canopy of trees makes it impossible to see what might be moving along the jungle floor anyway, whether enemy soldiers or something else. Humans have lived in that region for tens of thousands of years. The Sondong cave system has existed for millions of years, and yet its discovery was only recently documented. If not someone like Ho Khan earning an honest living by scouring the jungles for valuable wood, there's nothing else of value anyone wants to go looking for, at least nothing that's worth the trouble. And even Ho likely doesn't explore beyond a certain distance from his home. So if we were hoping for new evidence, we may never get it. If the Vietnamese locals remain content to explore only a short distance from their villages, the depths of these jungles will continue to remain a mystery. Still, without venturing into the realms of alien conspiracy or interdimensional travel, the idea of intelligent humanoid reptiles having evolved alongside mankind would understandably seem ludicrous. So perhaps the only logical theory we might have is that because of the war, military action in these heavily forested regions is what finally exposed mankind to these strange and elusive creatures. Or perhaps these soldiers were not the first humans to encounter them, but only the first in a very long time. And then there were the earthquakes. American soldiers watched their morning coffee being stirred by the massive impacts of distant bombs, while the Viet Cong hunkered down on their tunnels were praying they wouldn't be crushed to death, while the earth was shaking violently around them. Certainly, any undiscovered animal might have been stirred momentarily out of its cave by these widespread bombing campaigns. And once the war ended and the bombing stopped, the men returned home and the creatures returned to their quiet solitude. As far as their strange appearance goes, by comparison, 
It does seem that the deeper we have ventured away from the ocean's surface, the stranger the fish get, and the longer they can live. Some species of fish even produce their own ambient light, having adapted in an environment of complete darkness. And surviving in the depths of the ocean, we have documented species of even complex animals, whales and sharks, that can live for more than 400 years. Perhaps the same is true in dark jungles and massive unexplored cave systems. The deeper you go, the weirder it gets. The weirder it gets. And perhaps it just <laughs> takes a war to draw them out of hiding. That is very interesting. So, yeah, three stories, all very similar to one another, uh, told by what appear to be reputable military service personnel and, and uh, servicemen. Um, of course, of course, uh, they had to point out the fact that there's a lot of folks, not necessarily these gentlemen, but there was a lot of service personnel and military servicemen who came back from war suffering various kinds of uh, PTSD, right? Post-traumatic stress disorder or some kind of like uh, uh, affiliated type of anxiety or stress, um, all kinds of things that that one could potentially encounter when being in that kind of a situation, right? War is not fun. War is not easy. Um, I, I, can, I, I can't even fathom what and how a person who could be completely sane, normal, um, upon returning from combat would be in the same mental acuity. I, I, I don't know if that's even possible. Uh, for, for the things that they've encountered, things that they've been privy to, things they've seen and done, I don't think anyone can come back with in the same kind of, the same way they left. Okay? So could these stories be fictional? Could they be, could they have been made up? I mean, did these men know each other? You know? The time frames are consistent. But we're not 100% certain as to whether or not these stories were within the same regiment, the same battalion, um, was it the same area. Uh, I think they did mention that I think uh, it was close to the DMZ area. So this could have been like maybe North Vietnam or somewhere along those lines because that's where these sightings had taken place. Um, yeah, there's lots to unravel here. I mean, it's it's absolutely... It, it, it's... It's mind blowing, guys. It's it's absolutely interesting to the point where I'm not sure why they haven't actually released more videos or you know like there's guys like myself on YouTube who who could have easily made videos on this and to do like um, some kind of a documentary perhaps maybe like a, a little bit more research in, into what exactly happened. And maybe this is something I'll take it upon myself to do one day. But for now, um, and hey, th th there was th some of these people reached out to the likes of Art Bell, who, you know, who was part of Coast to Coast. Who doesn't know Coast to Coast? It's probably one of the most infamous, famous, you know, radio programs um, that talk about stuff like this, you know. And... Um, so he featured it on one of his episodes, but you know it'd be nice to see if there was any kind of follow-ups, right? Now, again, the Vietnam War was, you know, eons ago, right? I mean, we're we're talking about like you know over fifty years ago. So there's a lot of stuff that could have potentially been washed away, you know, um, in, in you know like things that were probably not documented very correctly, or maybe they were in some kind of magazine and some kind of print ad, maybe somebody scribed stuff on their notes, but who knows, who knows where all, all that stuff is now. I can tell you that these things, I've, this is not the first time I'm hearing of stuff like this, but um, it's absolutely incredible to hear these kind of stories and um, it, it makes you think, it definitely makes me think, it makes me think what else, what else is out there? Who else are we living with, right? I mean, we're just a speck the earth is just a speck in the grand scheme of things right in this universe and the multiverses that that are around us i mean just just i'll, I'll do a video one day and I'll, I'll show you how tiny we are relatively comparison in comparison to the many planets 
that are out there in the you know in the universe it, uh, the planets and then all that that makes up you know the galaxy that we're in and how many umpteen numbers of uh galaxies there are in the universe um hundreds if not thousands if not millions of different galaxies that are out there and you're telling me you're telling me that we're the only planet that actually has living people on it you know the bacteria okay the uh, bacteria in itself it's a living organism. Um, if you have bacteria, you have life. And and bacteria needs what to survive? They need water to survive, right? So there's a lot of planets, including mo uh, the moon, uh, Mars, that actually has uh, evidence to prove that there was water there. In fact, in Mars, there was like ice glaciers and water. And, you know, they're, they're trying to tap into that. They're trying to get some more information. So obviously there was a flow of organism, some kind of bacteria that might have been there. And then the moon itself, there's moon water. Um, but And I think over the years, over the coming years, we're going to probably get some more information on all this stuff. I know China's recently been to the moon. Uh, India sent, I mean, all kinds of countries are lining up to send people to the moon and to places like Mars. And over the course of time, I think we'll start to get more information about the possibilities of extraterrestrial life and uh, maybe some evidence to, to support that. Uh, unfortunately, for us to travel to Kepler B or some of these planets that are somewhat similar in comparison to Earth, it, it's, it's unrealistic right i mean we're talking about like light years pl some planets that are light years like if not light years millions of light years away we don't have that time unless they can look at quantum physics and if there's like folds within the universe that would allow for aircraft or you know things to be able to just you know move at an accelerated rate perhaps Maybe that's maybe that that's something that we can look into. But it's a beautiful story, stories, and uh, I'm I'm really glad to have shared it with you guys. Um, I'd love to hear your guys' comments. Uh, please like and share, subscribe. You know, again, it's, if this is your first time, it would really help us out if you can help us grow uh, by helping us out. You can like, you can subscribe, you can comment, and you can hit the bell no uh, for no bell notifications for for upcoming videos. So. Thank you guys for sticking around. And in the meantime and in between time, that's it, folks. Another beautiful episode in the books. I look forward to catching you guys on the next one. Peace.